A couple of months ago, our family moved back to the USA after four years of living in Europe. But even though as an American, I'm excited to be back in the country that I grew up in, as a minimalist, I have to say, living overseas has opened my eyes to a few reasons that minimalism is harder in the USA. And that's coming from me, someone who got rid of 95% of her belongings and who has been practicing minimalism for going on seven years now. I know that I didn't notice or understand a lot of these things until I had the opportunity to immerse myself in another country and culture. And so that's why today I thought it might be interesting for us to dive into this topic together and explore why minimalism is harder for most Americans and also to brainstorm some ideas about what we could do about it. Number one, societal norms are different. I guess the best way to put it is that it seems like in the USA, there's this general mindset that more and bigger means better. I call it the supersize me mindset. When we go to restaurants, we want bigger entrees, bigger drinks, we want free refills of soda with our meals. And homes on average are much smaller and simpler in other countries compared to the USA. Like if you take a look at this chart of average home sizes around the world, only Australia and New Zealand have larger footprints and not by much. And another thing that I noticed while I was living abroad were habits around credit card usage and feelings towards debt. For example, when we lived in Germany for four years, I did not use a credit card one single time while I was there, I paid cash for everything. But in the USA, it's really uncommon, I feel, to see someone paying with cash to the point where sometimes when I would pull out cash to pay at the grocery store or at Target, I could kind of notice the people behind me in line getting a little impatient with me for having to like count out my cash and coins. Come on, sister, let's get going here. And if you look at household debt, most countries have significantly lower household debt compared to the United States. And while almost 40% of American households are carrying credit card debt, that number is in the single digits in countries like Spain, Germany, and Italy. And from an anecdotal standpoint, I know that I get comments on my channel all the time from people who say what I call minimalism in their country is just considered normal behavior. And there's not a lot of research specifically into minimalism, but I was able to find some data and some studies that seem to jive with this sentiment. For example, in one poll of over 2,900 Americans, only 10% self-identified as minimalists. Whereas in a lifestyle poll of 1,400 people living in Japan, 54% said they were following a minimalist lifestyle. So what is a majority lifestyle practice in other countries is still a small countercultural movement here in the USA. And I'm sure that with my limited experience and knowledge and research, that there are plenty of good examples that I've missed. So feel free to drop me a comment down below and let me know where in the world that you're watching this video from and how the area and culture that you live in makes it easier or harder to be a minimalist. I look forward to reading your comments. Number two, consumption and sustainability. When it comes to attitudes and practices around consumption and sustainability, many other countries are light years ahead of us. Plastic waste output in the USA has increased drastically since the 1960s with around 42 million metric tons of plastic waste being generated each year, which is around 287 pounds per person per year. And you might argue that US is a bigger country and therefore that's why it's generating more plastic waste. But if you look at countries of similar sizes, you'll find that Americans are still generating two to eight times as much plastic waste per year than those countries. As an example, after living in Germany for four years, I definitely noticed a big difference in the lifestyle around single use items. Growing up in the USA, when we celebrated parties at school, we always had disposable plastic cups and paper plates. But in Germany, when my sons had parties at school, all of the kids were told to bring their own plates, their own cups, and their own utensils that they would then bring home to wash at the end of the day. And when you go to the grocery store there, people bring their own reusable bags instead of putting everything into plastic bags and generating tons of plastic bag waste. Number three, convenience. After moving back to the USA, I've definitely become more aware of how 
brands and stores make it so easy and convenient for you to spend as much money as possible. Before, when I went to go buy food in Germany, food was pretty much all they had at the store. But now when I go to Target or Walmart or Costco here, before you can get to the food aisles, you have to walk past all sorts of cool stuff like electronic gadgets and gizmos, the latest trends in fashion, and my personal weakness, cool kitchen gadgets and appliances. It's like the saying goes, out of sight, out of mind. And it was definitely much easier for me to stick to my shopping list and avoid making impulse purchases before because if I didn't wanna buy those things, I could just avoid those stores altogether. But now in the USA, I have to flex my intentional spending muscles a lot more often because I'm being presented with more and more temptation to impulse buy on a regular basis. And in fact, in next week's video, I'm gonna be talking more about our spending and what's been happening to our budget since coming back to the USA. So if you haven't already, please make sure to go down and hit the little red subscribe button and ring the bell to turn on all notifications because I'm going to be opening up about how much money we're spending as well as show you how I plan to reset our budget so that you can do the same. Number four, over the top marketing. And speaking of temptation, marketers in the USA are so much better when it comes to encouraging people to spend money. I mean, they have perfected advertising to the point where it's almost an art form here. And I'm sure that most Americans can think about an ad that has made them laugh or cry or just got stuck in their minds like glue. Maybe it's also because of the language barrier, but I felt like it was so much easier to ignore and tune out ads in Germany versus the USA. But I also think that it's just because they're more attention grabbing here. And I know for me, there's also a huge nostalgia factor. Like I literally gasped out loud when I saw the Halloween cereal on display at the end of the aisles in Target, and I just had to buy it and take it home to share with my kids because it made me so nostalgic about eating the same stuff in my childhood. They really know how to push my nostalgia buttons. Number five, problems with infrastructure. In many ways, the systems and infrastructure of the USA versus where we lived in Europe are just not as accommodating for living a minimalist lifestyle. The public transportation system that we used in Berlin is ranked number one in the entire world, which made it easy for us to get rid of both of our cars and use buses and bikes or walking to get around the city. Compared to that, the public transportation system here is laughable. And even if you live within close walking distance of schools and shops and libraries, there aren't always sidewalks for you to walk safely to get from place to place. And the same thing goes for the monetary system, the educational system, the healthcare system, etc., etc. Where minimalist living in these areas might not just be inconvenient, but downright inaccessible or impossible for people. By the way, I'm not making this video with the intention of trying to make Americans or anyone else feel bad or guilty about their lifestyle but rather as a way to gently point out some of the barriers or obstacles that you might encounter on the path towards minimalism so that you're better prepared to navigate around them. And by no means am I trying to act like I am the perfect minimalist who has all of the answers. And in fact, I don't think such thing as a perfect minimalist actually exists, which we're going to dive into more in just a moment. But I believe the more conversations that we can have around these topics, the more progress that we can make both on a personal and societal level. How to become a minimalist even when it's hard. What kinds of things can we do to make minimalism easier for ourselves? Number one, open your eyes. Start to notice the world around you more and observe how you're spending your time and money, the advertising and messages that surround you, and how the people you spend your time with encourage or discourage you in all of these things. Raising your awareness in these areas can help make the rest of the steps you take towards minimalist living a lot easier and less stressful. Number two, tune in to your wants versus needs. A lot of us have been conditioned with this knee-jerk reaction that when we see something that we like, we feel like we need to buy and own that thing. But if we pause and take a few moments to question this impulse, most of us will probably realize 
that there are very few things in our lives that are genuine needs. One of my personal favorite mantras is to tell myself, just because I like something doesn't mean I need to buy or own it. And this one sentence has helped me save so much money and also kept a ton of clutter out of my home. Number three, set your intentions. One more piece of advice I would give to anyone who wants to become a minimalist is to start with the end in mind, to ask yourself, what really matters to me? Because when you know what your core values and beliefs are, that's going to make it a lot easier to let go of the things that aren't in alignment with that, which includes everything from material possessions to behaviors like saying yes to everything and people pleasing. This is also why I think there's no such thing as a perfect minimalist, because the way one person practices minimalism might look very, very different to someone else. And it's less of a black and white philosophy where you're either doing it right or wrong and more of a spectrum where there are a lot of ups and downs and you have to do experimentation and testing to figure out how to tailor it to your lifestyle and needs. And if any of this sounds good to you and you want to know more about minimalism and how to get started, make sure to go check out this video with 10 of the best lessons that I've learned after years of practicing minimalist living, or I'll see you next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.